there's nothing mystical or complicated about a sextant. All it is is a device that measures the angle between two objects. The sextant makes use of two mirrors. With this sextant, one of the mirrors, mirror A the diagram, is half silvered, which allows some light to pass through. In navigating, you look at the horizon through this mirror. The other mirror, mirror B in the diagram, is attached to a movable arm. Light from an object, let's say the sun, reflects off this mirror. The arm could be moved to a position where the sun's reflection off the mirror also reflects off mirror A and through the eyepiece. What you see when this happens is one object, the sun, superimposed on the other, the horizon. The angle between the two objects is then read off the scale. What makes a sextant so useful in navigation is its accuracy. It can measure an angle with precision to the nearest 10 seconds. A degree is divided into 60 minutes. A minute is divided into 60 seconds. Celestial navigation using a sextant is a complex and involved process that involves a fair amount of calculating, correcting, referring to tables, knowledge of the heavens and the earth, as well as a lot of common sense. But the basic principles behind celestial navigation are fairly straightforward. Here are a few examples that show how a sextant can be used to find location. Finding latitude is easy enough. The first thing you need to do is measure the angle between the horizon and the sun, when the sun is at its highest point, which is right around noontime on your watch. A quick look at your trusty tables tells you which line of latitude the sun should be above on that particular day. For example, let's say it's noon on December the 21st, and the sun is directly overhead. Well, on that day the sun is above the Tropic of Capricorn, so your latitude would have to be 23.5 degrees south. Every hour the sun moves 15 degrees. This means that if the sun is above the longitude of 0 degrees at noon, one hour later it will be above 15 degrees west. The first known mural sextant was constructed in Ray, Iran, by Abu Muhammad al-Kujandi, in the year of 994 AD. To measure the obliquity of the ecliptic, al kujand Plus invented a device that he called Al-Fakri Sextant, a reference to his patron, the ruler, Fakr al dola Arab astronomers were heavily influenced by Byzantine astronomers. Al-Biruni, the creator of the Flat Earth Map, was raised by Greek Byzantine astronomers who were brought to Persia to teach astronomy to Al-Biruni. The spinning ball Earth did not come along until Copernicus, a priest, invented the ball Earth concept in 1543. The sextant came along in 994 AD, that is 549 years before the ball earth was invented. Just a quick reminder here, coincidentally, all the creators of the spinning ball earth posed with Freemasonic tools. Just saying it, is it just a coincidence? Sextants used today were implemented around 1731 by John Hadley and Thomas Godfrey, but it was also found later in the unpublished writings of Isaac Newton. It can be considered just an upgrade of the model first created by the Arabs in 994 AD. Nowadays, adepts of the ball earth religion ignore the real history of the sextant. John Hadley created the modern sextant in 1731, which was based on the one that had been used for 737 years, which considered a flat, non-rotating earth. Sextant could only work on a flat plane doesn't prove a sphere the the reason i brought it up is Thank you. because I, i'm curious to know how how it works on something flat triangulate yourself with the three different positions because they're crossing at two different points when you've only got two so you could be at any or either of these two locations and when you get the third you've got an exact location but that means that all three of these circles are all circles of equal altitude with straight lines to get 90 degrees to the gp of the star well this straight line here and this straight line here, and this straight line here, are necessitated to do the triangulation, meaning that all three of these circles are all circles on the same level plane. Sexton could only work on a flat plane, because you can't achieve an angle without two straight lines. You need a corner, a vertex. A curved line does not allow for a vertex or a corner. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's Yeah, I, I would agree with that. There was something he said about drawing a straight line to the horizon, uh, which runs contrary to the rebuttal to the black swan. You can't hold both those positions that you're drawing a straight line to the horizon and that uh, the horizon's refracted. The baseline has to be zero. It has to be flat. It has to be a straight line. So the refraction has no meaning to the use of a sextant 
once your star is 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 miles away at its uh, GP. It is getting the correct angle to it, and no optics could affect it. Yeah, uh, he mentioned flippantly the South Celestial Pole and refraction. Number one, the South Celestial Pole, that's an imaginary point in the sky. He also mentioned refraction. I don't think you realize what you're saying. It's a much like the imaginary point in the sky, because when you bagak refraction, that's terrestrial refraction. You're within a paradox off a mother begging the question fallacy. The paradox is that you got curved atmosphere or curved gases. Gases have no inherent shape. They don't curve. And then you have to know the radius. So when you just flippantly put the, those terms out, get ready to get your ass handed to you. Thanks for watching a brief history of the sextant. It was designed to work on a flat, non-rotating Earth. Until next time, this has been Flat Earth, Banjo USA, Japan and Brazil.